Chillin' Moose in Gordo. Oh, excuse me, this is Chillin' Moose 2. Hey, Brian Little Kane, this is Cigar Vlog. So, check this out. Chillin' Moose, one of the more interesting named, with one of the more interestingly banded cigars out there. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion as to whether or not this is a short filler or a long filler. When I say short filler, I mean like mixed filler. And given the way it's in the way that it's actually advertised on the actual catalog page, I'm inclined to call this a huge Cuban sandwich. But just take a look at the band. <laughs> There's something about this kind of strikes me as a little Rocky and Bullwinkle. Where Bullwinkle always shows up. Hey Rocky, why should we pull a rabbit out of my hat? Hi, <coughs> <Hey>, you're <farmer. laughs> I mean, that is one angry looking bunny. <laughs> well, anyway, let me go ahead and get this cut and lit. And I'm not entirely sure who actually puts this out. I think it's just kind of its own brand. I don't know where it's actually from off the top of my head. But there's something about the whole idea of a chillin' moose that makes you think super duper Canadian as hell. It's uh, probably Dominican, but you know. Don't quote me on that. I feel always got a hair stuck on that. Okay. And like I said, there's been a little bit of confusion over whether or not these are long filler or short filler. And typically long fillers tend to be advertised as long fillers. Whereas short fillers, you hear about what the blend is, but that's typically it. Alright, Wayne, cooperate with me. I need to get this lit. Okay, well, I think I got a decent, decent enough light on it. Right off the bat, real strong espresso. Strong, deep, rich coffee notes off of that. No spice, touch of earthy. I want to there's almost something superficially sweet in the background of that. Very, very subtle. All right. So far, so good. Gonna go ahead and smoke this down to the first inch, and uh, given the size of this thing, that could take a while. And I'll give you an update from there. Okay. So, coming up on the first inch here. Burn is, uh, I don't know if that's just my crappy lighting skill, or application, apparently. Uh, it's like, I know how to light just fine, I just, I typically don't do a good job because I'm just going to burn it anyway. But anyway, so far flavors have been not so much uh, peppery, spicy, anything, but to be very, very dark espresso. And the retro hill gets you a real dark chocolate cocoa smell as well. It's kind of weird. If you puff it a little lighter... You get an almost caramelly vanilla thing going on. Almost. And there is a subtle sweetness in there as well. So hopefully this is going to build and end up uh, getting a bit more pronounced. Other than that, I'm going to need to uh, figure out how to smooth this light out. That's kind of one of the problems with these big, huge gordos is sometimes they don't burn too great. And that's just, you know, big tube, a lot of stuff, kind of difficult to keep everything, you know, consistent. You also need to double puff, which can be... It can backfire if you're not careful. Well, anyway, I'm going to get this down to the back halfway point here. Oh, <laughs> I went ahead and yanked the band because it was super duper loose. And I was actually a little concerned that the cigar was going to like slide out of my fingers while I was holding it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get down to the uh, midpoint and uh, get a proper update from there. Alright. So, the ash just decided to uh, take its leave. So that's, uh, that kind of struck me as a pretty decent about halfway point there. So far, flavors have been pretty consistent. Nice, deep, cocoa-y, dark espresso flavor. Dark cocoa, 
truck, like the uh, retro hail. When I was what I was initially thinking it might have been a touch of vanilla, it was actually I kind of misinterpreted that. It's actually a little bit more of a floral note, particularly in the retro hail. Along with a slight nuttiness. Overall, though, definitely an excellent after dinner cigar. I can definitely recommend coffee. Like, specifically coffee. Any kind of coffee. Coffee, espresso, lattes, whatever you like. Uh, more than, like, say, a whiskey. Although, keep in mind, it is a cigar. You can, you know, smoke this with whatever the hell you like. <laughs> You're not going to hurt my feelings. But, uh, yeah, definitely. You get done with dinner. You're just kicking back for the rest of the night. Hanging out with your friends, doing whatever. Hanging out with the family. Fire up one of these. Have it alongside your pie or cake or whatever. <laughs> This is kind of striking me as a little bit more of the dessert cigar, which uh, I actually like. I like a little sweeter, a little cocoa ish The really dirt leather sandalwood kind of things, I'm kind of, uh, not that crazy for, but uh, overall, though, flavor profile is actually pretty good. Thing is, it's, uh, it's kind of not really going anywhere, <laughs> you know? And I think that's kind of the thing is, I think this is actually a Cuban sandwich style cigar. What that means is that basically you've got mixed filler, and there's all the uh, little bit of scrap leftovers from like the whole leaves that uh, they used to make long filler cigars, as well as wrappers and all that. They just kind of take the leftovers, not floor sweepings, leftovers, and they get the most bang for their buck by just kind of wadding those up. Well, not really wadding them up, but just, you know, forming them up, wrapping them in like maybe a little bit of long filler, binding it, wrapping it, and you're making an El Chipo. There's nothing wrong with them unless you're paying like 60 bucks for a box because they're like a $30 a box cigar, you know, they should be at least half the price of long filler cigars. And I think that's what these are, is a mixed filler cigar. That's it. These are pretty good. There's some mixed fillers out there that are kind of like, oh, I don't know about those, but uh, this one's, this is definitely worth the money so far. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and keep smoking this down in the nub and uh, give an update when I burn my fingers. Well, hopefully not actually burn my fingers, but you get the idea. Okie doke. <clears throat> Seems to be a pretty good point to wrap this up. So far, flavors have been pretty consistent throughout, and that's kind of to be expected considering the type of cigar that this is. If this is uh, what I think it is, an actual Cuban sandwich, you know, an actual mixed filler cigar, then you're really not going to have too many uh, actual flavor transitions or anything like that. So... When you find one of those, the best thing you can hope for is a consistent flavor throughout. And that's definitely what these have. That flavor is typically deep espresso, a touch of dark cocoa, and something slightly floral and sweet in the retro ale. Overall, though, pretty good cigar for coffee. And if you can get them at the right price, or if the price is right for you, these would definitely make an excellent everyday. Beyond that, though, not really much else to say about it. I can't say this though. You probably want to get these in a little bit smaller size because Gordos have a tendency to burn a little weird, and if they're mixed filler, they burn even weirder. So just keep that in mind. Other than that though, like I said, there's not much else to say. Good cigar, uh, good possibly every day if the price is right. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Well, anyway. If you like this review or any other review, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know if you had a different experience or if there's anything you want to see. Uh, other than that, check out my Twitch stream, which is now going like Sunday night to Friday night, midnight to 2 a.m., kind of a night all slot. If you can't make it for the live broadcast, it's recorded for like a week or two afterwards. Go and check it out. Stop by and say hi. <sighs> other than that, that's pretty much all I got for this one. I'll see you next time.